Hello everyone and welcome to today's class. Many of you have taken other art classes or you've painted on your own, so you may have an idea of how to paint or how the painting process works. But before beginning your first painting, there's actually a lot of work and prep that goes into it. So today I'm going to show you some things you need to do before starting your first painting to get better work in less time. This video is going to focus on setting up your own still life at home and how to choose which part or parts of that still life that you want to paint. Since the first still life we're going to do in this class is going to be a value study and with only one object, that's the painting that we're going to prepare for and the still life that we're going to set up today. So let's begin. You're going to need both a tabletop and a background with a white, gray, or black covering of some kind. I just used a gray towel and a piece of white foam board, and those were two things that were pretty easy for me to find. You could also use a tablecloth, clothing, anything you can find around your house. Then you'll need to find a simple form. Examples would be a cylinder, a cube, or a sphere. And you'll want it to be in any shade of black, white, or gray. I'm using a Kleenex box that I painted gray, but you can also use other things from around the house like a paper towel roll, a cup, a ball, a gift box. Just look for an object with not a lot of detail or texture and just something that's smooth and simple. And again, black, white, or gray. Learning how to paint can be overwhelming. And since this is your first still life, we will just be using black and white paint. Eliminating color from the equation will teach you how to see how light or how dark your objects are so that you know how light or how dark to mix your paint. And this is called a value study. Don't worry, we will paint in color later. Before we move on, let's take a minute to talk about the role that lighting is going to play in your still life. The way you orient your light is going to give your still life a variety of looks. And when you go to paint this still life, you're gonna to wanna to paint a look that is dynamic and dimensional, but ultimately is a painting that you can learn from and is inspiring for you to paint. So let's talk more about light. Two things to think about when getting your lighting scenario established are being aware of the position of your lights to your subject. So where is my light compared to my cube? Is it off to the side? Is it on top? Is it behind? In front of? Things like that. And the second is the position of your subject to you from your fixed point of view. So from your easel. It does you no good to have a great setup from an angle from which you are not going to be painting from. So walk back and forth between your setup and your easel as you experiment with your light. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to experiment with moving the light around, turning on and off lights around me, and I'll see what I can get. I'll need to keep some of those backlights on uh, so that I can see my easel. Look at how I'm holding the light to the side of the cube. Do you see how it gives the cube its dimension? We know the cube is all just one shade of gray. You saw me painting it. But we are seeing more than one shade of gray once we put the light on it. These shades of gray are called values. It's how light or how dark each of those shades of gray look. Here we can see a cast shadow, some midtones. We can count the different values that we are seeing. When we change the position of the light, those values change too. They get lighter or darker. And so do their shapes. A good number of values you'll want to see in this first still life setup is five or more. So just go ahead and count and make sure that you're seeing at least five. We see life three-dimensionally. For this reason, the most dynamic paintings are the ones in which the audience could walk right into the scene or reach out and touch the subject. Lighting is going to be the single most important element that you can control early on in your painting process that will elevate your paintings and add that third dimension. Let's look over here. If your light is more like mine and it's a spotlight, 
you might have one bright spot and the rest is dark. If you're using a diffused light like a lamp and it has a shade, or if you hold your spotlight further back from your subject, you may see less of a harsh contrast and more gradual transitions between your lights and darks. Right now, it's not important that you choose one or the other. What's important is that you are noticing these differences. Before you decide on your lighting, you're also gonna to wanna to think about your composition. Another part of setting up your still life that can greatly affect or alter the way your painting ultimately looks. You can make a viewfinder and I'll link that video below or you can just use your camera's viewfinder. So just grab your phone. The edges of your viewfinder correlate with the edges of your canvas. So with your viewfinder, you can see a whole bunch of different ways of seeing this one still life. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, crop so that you only see part of the object and you really don't have to commit right away. Again, just keep experimenting and see what you like. Think about perspective. Right now, I'm looking up at the cube and it feels monumental. Maybe it looks like a tall building and we're looking up at it. Even though it's not a building, this perspective gives you that same universal feeling of, wow, that building is so big, or I feel small. When I look down, though, on the same object, it looks so small. You may know this as bird's eye view. It's that top perspective. In this case, we feel big and maybe powerful looking down at the object. And it doesn't feel like a building anymore. A painting can be very interesting when you give a new perspective to something that is ordinary, so don't be afraid to experiment and see how much you can change the feel of your subject. Let me know, what perspectives are you finding by playing around with the light in your still life? Can you compare the feeling you're getting to anything more universal, like the building example? I'd love to see those in the comments below or in our classroom chat. Here is the view that I ultimately captured, and it's what I'll be painting in an upcoming video. But first, we're going to learn a little more about value, so in the next few videos, I'll show you how to make a value scale to help you identify and organize your values, and then how to do some simple sketching for this painting. Again, just keep in mind that the end goal here is you painting your first still life, and it's a value study. This cluster of videos are all leading up to that. so. You can plan and prepare to paint a great painting. I'm looking forward to seeing what lighting schemes and compositions you guys come up with, and I'll see you in the next video.